All right, this is Mark Berkey from BerkeyAcademy.com, and welcome to Normal Distribution Calculations 2. In the previous video, we worked what I call forward problems. Given some number, here we're looking at IQ with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. Given an IQ like 120, what we did in the last video is I showed you how to calculate the probability that someone would have an IQ bigger than 120. So in a 10 second review, we drew a picture of what we were talking about. We calculated a z-score. Z equals X minus the mean over the standard deviation. We got a Z score of 1.33. We took that Z score to the table and looking at the table, we found that a Z score of 1.33, and if you need a Z score table, please go to my website, www.berkeyacademy.com. And this uh, Z score table we're looking at here is called norm tab, N-O-R-M-T-A-B dot PDF. And if we look up this 1.3, remember that the columns have the second decimal place, we get 0 0.9082. And we always have to remember that this table always gives us the probability on the left side, or the less than probability, so 0 0.9082 is all this probability of being less than 120. We subtract 1 minus that, and we get 0 0.0918. 9.18% of people have an IQ greater than 120. That was the last video. Now in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on, instead of what I call the forward problems, give me an IQ and I'll tell you the probability, we're going to work on backward problems. And don't, you know, don't worry if your professor or your teacher doesn't call them backward problems. That's just something I made up to help me teach this. We're going to work on backward problems <clears throat> where instead of giving me an IQ and asking for a probability, I want to give you a probability and ask you to find the IQ. So, for example, Suppose, well, like, like we just saw in this example, we know that 0 0.0918, 9.18% of people have an IQ over 120. How could we find what IQ it would be where only 5% of people are above that IQ? We don't know the IQ. That's the point. And so we know that it's going to be an IQ that's going to be something larger than 120, right? Because if 9% is in this area, to get 5%, 0 0.05, we're going to have to go to a smaller region. So let's talk about how to do that. Now, I have this four-step process for a forward problem. Draw a picture, calculate a z-score take the z to the table, find the probability, which is a less than probability, and go back to the picture to find your final answer. Here we're going to do the same steps, but we're going to go in reverse. That's why I like to call it a backward problem or a, or a reverse problem. We go backwards. We start with a picture. So let's draw this picture. We don't know what the IQ is, but we know we want 5% over in that upper tail. The top 5% of people have an IQ above what? So that's the X that we want to find, X question mark. How are we going to do that? Well, what we want to do is work backwards. We drew our picture. Now what we want to do is take a less than probability to the table to find a Z. So we're working in reverse order here. Remember that this table, the cumulative standard normal distribution table, works with less than probabilities. So if we want to find what z-score first, and then we can find what x, what probability should we take to the table? Well, if there's going to be 5% of people greater than this IQ, what we have to take to the table is the fact that 95% of people, I'm just going to add some zeros here, uh, 0 0.9500 of probability needs to be less than this z-score and this IQ. So what we have to do is take this number to the z-score table, 
look inside the probabilities to try to find what z-score will give us as close as possible to 0 0.9500. So let's go back to our z-score table. Let me zoom out here a bit. So keep in mind that the z-scores are listed in this first column and first row for the negative ones and in this column and in this row for the second digit for the positive ones. And we're going to be looking for a positive z-score because we're looking for a, a number bigger than average. Let me show you how I hunt for probabilities. So the probabilities are these numbers in the, the middle parts of each side. What I do to find, try to find a number like 0.9500, 95%, I start at the top, say in the middle column, 0.05, and I just run my finger down the middle until I start to get close to what I'm looking for. So here's 0.9115. Let me zoom in there so you can see this on the video a little bit better. 0 0.91, 0 0.92, 93, 95. Okay, we're getting close. That's pretty close to what we're looking for. And then I start moving side to side to see if I can get any closer to the z-score that I'm looking for, or the probability that I'm hunting for. Now, 0 0.9505 is pretty close. If I move this way, I get further away from 0 0.9500. If I move this way, well, look, I'm exactly the same distance away, but now I'm below. So this number is 0 0.0005 away from 0 0.9500. And so is this one. So you have a couple of choices here in this case. I shouldn't have started off with such a, a difficult case, but that's okay. You can handle it. We could use the z-score 1.64 the second digit, or the z-score 1.65, and either one of these would give us a pretty accurate idea of what to do, what z-score to use. In this case, this is one of only three or four cases like this, when you have two probabilities that are exactly the same distance on either side from the probability we're looking for, the common practice is to average those two z-scores, 1.64 and 1.65. Now, if you average those two numbers, what you're going to get is 1.645. So let's go back to our drawing here. So again, if you wanted to just use 1.64, you'll get a pretty close answer. If you wanted to use 1.65, that'd be okay, but the pros in this case, the professionals, are going to use 1.645 in this case. So let's review. We drew our picture. We took a less than probability to the table. We found a z-score. And now what we want to do is go back, since this is a backwards problem. A backwards problem, we want to use this formula to find the x. So let me show you how we can do that. Since we know the z-score, and we know the standard deviation, and we know the mean, 3 out of 4, we can find x using this formula. Now what I usually do though, is I, I write this a little bit more convenient way. Sorry, I accidentally erased that. That's an ugly sigma. Let me fix that. Okay. I usually solve this for x and use that version of the formula. Otherwise, we have to solve this formula for x every single time we use it. So in a backwards problem, what I like to do is, if you solve this for x, what we're going to do is multiply both sides by the sigma, and we get x minus the mean equals z times the standard deviation. And then when we add the mean to both sides, we're going to end up with a formula like this. It's the same formula. We're just rewriting it slightly. That x equals the mean plus c times the standard deviation. Okay? Now, let's use that to get this IQ, and let's go back to the picture and make sure that it makes sense. So... 
x equals the mean 100 plus z 1.645 times standard deviation is 15 and let's see what we get here so 1.645 times 15 equals 24.675 so we get a hundred plus 24.675 and so our IQ that we're looking for here is 124.675 Five. A number a little bit bigger than 120, just like we anticipated it would be. If you ever do one of these backward problems, and you're uncomfortable for some reason, do it forwards again and verify your answer. So, for example, pretend that you didn't know this probability was 5%, and you didn't know that this was 95% over here, do the problem forward. Use this number to calculate the z-score and you'll get 1.645. Take that to the table and when you try to look up 1.645 you say well I can't look up 1.645 on this table but if I rounded it to 1.65 I would get 95 percent or something very close is less than and so that's a way to verify that you did the right thing and that you got the right answer. Another way is to look at the picture. You know that this answer has to be a number bigger than average and look at your picture. That's the final step in the backwards procedure. So start with a picture, take a less than probability to the table, find the Z, plug the Z into this formula, go back to the picture and just make sure that your answer 124 IQ or 125 IQ could that be, could that make sense that only 5% of people have an IQ more than that? Well, given that the mean is 100, yeah, that could work. That could work. So this is how to do a backwards kind of problem. Now, in the next video, I'm going to use a different example so that we're not stuck with this IQ example all the time, a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. And I'm going to do the most complicated kind of backward problem that you can do. So let me just give you an introduction to what that is very quickly so you can see if you'd be interested in. Instead of finding 1x, suppose we wanted to do answer a question like this. Suppose we wanted to open up a school, and in this school... We wanted to target, say, the average Joe kind of student. We didn't want, you know, for this school, we're not going to have geniuses. And in this school, we're not going to have people who need a lot of remedial work. We want to target these people in the middle here. Then, how many people in the middle? What percentage of people in the middle do you want to target? Well, that's not important, but let's just suppose that we wanted to target the 80% in the middle. Then let's find two z-scores two z and two x's, IQ1, IQ2, between which will be the middle 80%. We'll solve that kind of problem in the next video.